Okay, okay, okay. So let's start. Uh, so you got these wonderful uh, lecture notes, which were sent to you by, uh, by the way, is he here, Bertram? Not yet. Uh, but Bertram, gratefully, uh, uh, thanks go to Bertram for sending this out. Okay, and what we want to do is on page five, you have this lemma A2. A2. And this is that inf sub L P psi is equal to sub inf of L P psi. Okay, and hello Bertram. Uh, okay, and L P psi was our famous Lagrangian. L P psi is equal to first of all our target functional W2 squared uh, of pi x to gamma. Uh, okay, and this d mu x, this is what we want to optimize. This is our target functional, <coughs> where pi is equal to integral over pi x d mu x, and is an element of <coughs> martingale transport from mu to something. And uh, then this is the target functional. And then we have to plug in uh, before, but before I do it, before I do the optimizer, here is a change of notation. We are just work in progress and we're changing notation sometimes. This is the target functional where, which as it was introduced in this four authors paper, by Backhoff, Beigelberg, Husman and Kehlblatt. And gamma here is a standard Gaussian. And it seems more natural to put here a gamma x, where gamma x is the Gaussian centered at x. You, we recall that the pi x have barycenter equal to x. Okay. So it is more natural, or it seems to us now more natural, to compare the pi x with the gamma x. But this is purely notational. When you put here instead a gamma zero, then you just have to add this x squared over two. So this is up to a constant, it's the same thing. Uh, and, but to get nicer formulas, uh, we change the notation to this thing here. Okay, now next thing is we have to penalize that the pi in general does not transport mu to our mu. This is what we always have is that the mu and the nu are our two uh, measures and therefore we compare integral d <coughs> Uh, nu of uh, y minus d uh, p y of y. d p y, this p, you remember this is a measure on the square are the, <coughs> uh, these are the probability measures on R d cross Rd. Okay, the first uh, component is called x. This is the x and this is the y. And if we project the pi onto the y, what we should have is this thing, that this thing here is equal to the nu. This means that the mu t transports the mu to nu. However, in general, and this is the whole duality approach, we allow for more general pi, which transports to something, namely to this py. And this we penalize 
with a Lagrange multiplier psi of y, where the psi is in C continuous, that's natural, and make it bounded. Uh, can you? Yeah, it seems one can read very well today. I took a dark uh, sweater in order to uh, let you see it better. Okay, and alternatively, we could also have uh, psi in linear, C lin rd, by lin rd we take all the continuous functions which grow at most linearly at infinity, okay? Because again, these things here are measures with second moments, so we have to make sure that this integral here makes sense. But if this is bounded, it certainly makes sense because these are probabilities, but it still certainly makes sense if we have the psi in this C, C lin. But while this thing here is a nice thing where we can, where we have good hope to find the optimizer, here these uh, function spaces are somewhat uh, arbitrary and in general, as we, we shall see, uh, we have no hope to find an optimizer here in these, uh, uh, in these classes of functions. But our aim will be to, uh, nevertheless, to find some psi, but this, for this we will have to go to some larger, uh, larger set uh, of functions. And we have to, this is what we de developed today. Okay, so this is the, uh, the uh, setting. And yeah, the lemma says that there is no duality gap as we wanted, that the inf sup is the sup inf, and in fact this is equal to the sup min of the same thing, because this inf here <coughs> is, uh, is always attained. Uh, yeah, this we have shown it essentially. Uh, anyhow, this is just a remark, I will not elaborate on this. So, how do we prove the lemma? Well, this is the classical situation of the min-max theorem. So what do we need for the min-max theorem? We need that this thing here is convex uh, and concave uh, in, the, in the right directions. So this here is a function of pi. This is clearly convex. Uh, this here is a function of psi is obviously linear when you fix uh, the pi. So this thing here is satisfied, the good convexity and concavity. And what we need is, well, on the second set, we don't have any topology or so. On the first set, which is this thing here, uh, we have a topology, namely the weak topology inherited from this space here. Uh, okay, weak topology, it means uh, that we take the duality with the uh, bounded continuous functions, in this case on Rd cross Rd. Okay, and what we need is that the function, it should have the proper continuity uh, property with respect to the uh, to the uh, topology of this set. And the second thing is that uh, you need some compactness here. Okay, now what is the right continuity property? So we have to show that for every psi, the function uh, pi goes into L pi psi is lower semi-continuous, that's what you need for the weak topology, okay, on this set. So this is one point, call it one, and two, <coughs> well, we would like to have that this set is compact here. When we put, when we did put in the new here, when we fixed the new, it was perfectly a compact set. This is what uh, 
Bertram used when he uh, was uh, uh, teaching here on, well, not here, but on his computer uh, on uh, two or three weeks ago. The problem is this thing here is not quite compact, but it's close to compact. And there is a version which we cite here, what instead of having the, the whole set here is compact, is the following uh, condition. There exists a Psi such that Pi goes over in L Pi Psi is, this has a name, is inf compact, is inf compact. And what does this mean? I.e. that uh, the level sets, uh, the pi such that L pi psi uh, is less than or equal uh, to C is compact for every C. <coughs> so if we have one, then we know these things here are closed sets, okay, by the semi-continuity. And, but we need more. We need that this is compact, but this we only need for some psi. Okay, this is one of the many versions of the uh, min-max theorem. And it's quoted here from the book by Ober and Ekeland, which is a bestseller. And yeah, once again, this is one of our treasures, the min-max theorem. It's somewhat equivalent to Hambanach. And well, for the logicians, you can both are equivalent to the axiom of choice. Uh, but that's not our point here. So it's a very nice consequence of the Hambanach theorem. And it's non-trivial already in finite dimension. Of course, we always uh, apply it here in an infinite dimensional setting. Uh, but even for finite dimensional spaces, it's highly non-trivial, just as the Hambanach theorem is non-trivial also in Rn. Okay, this was just a little remark. So this we have to prove. Okay, so once we have this, this thing here follows by this version of the min-max theorem. Okay, now let me get some, ha, huh. I think I, so these things, oh no, 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 it's just, the big nostalgia to be able to write on something like a blackboard. So if we can do this, uh, we are nicely done. Okay, now one more word. There exists the Psi and we shall take e.g. Pi Psi equals zero, which is perfectly legitimate, okay? And in this case, the Psi term vanishes and we just have the original, uh, <clears throat> the original thing. Okay, now that this is lower semi-continuous. So uh, the proof of one, okay, we take a Pi n, which goes to Pi weekly in m t mu dot, okay, and we have to show, have to show that the L P psi is less than or equal to lim uh, pi n L of pi n psi and say the lim inf over the n. Okay, so this we have to show. Uh, so again, 
I will, I have to write up again what the LP psi is. So once again, this is one, one half Wasserstein squared uh, from pi x. As I told you, we now take the gamma x uh, minus integral psi of y d mu y minus dp y of y. Okay, now if the pi n goes to pi in the weak topology, uh, uh, well, then this thing, this pi n, integrated against this bounded continuous function. So they say, again, for our purpose, this we take in C B of R D. So this is not a problem. Here we have it. Here it's more delicate because if I do here the n's and here the pi n x, then that the pi n's converge weakly to pi does not mean that for every x, yeah, here I'm missing a d mu x, that for mu almost each x, we have that the pi n x goes to uh, goes to pi x, but this is why we have spoken last time about Komlosh and uh, and uh, this uh, 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 lemma by Freddy Delban and myself. By the way, commercial the paper which I announced is is by now in archive and on my website. It's the number 180 of my publications, the last one. And if you are interested in the in the subtleties of Komlosh, uh, you are most welcome to look it up. Okay, so coming here again, there is little reason why the pi and x should converge in any sense. This is like you have, as I told you last time, when you have a function, a sequence of functions fn on say zero one, uh, there is and. Uh, it converges, say, weakly to zero in L2, then there is little reason that there is a pointwise convergence. If you think of the Rademacher functions or in uh, uh, probabilistic language about independent Bernoulli variables, they tend weakly to zero, but at every point they jump between plus one and minus one, and it doesn't help to pass to subsequences, but it does help to take uh, uh, to take convex combinations. So there exist convex combinations. I do it now uh, in the, like the delban schachamer lemma, but if you want, you can do it a la Komlosch. And I call this pi and tilde in the convex hull of pi n, pi n plus one, etc. Okay, <coughs> such that pi n tilde uh, x converges to some pi tilde x <coughs> uh, in P2 Rd, uh, <coughs> uh, in P2 Rd. Uh, for mu almost each x. Okay, so this is exactly what I have told you last time. So for example, when you have uh, such a sequence pi and tilde, uh, I showed this explicitly. Now, the nice thing is when I do things here in the uh, uh, in passing to convex combinations, so I put here a tilde here. These are the convex combinations. Well, here uh, little changes because whenever you have a convergence sequence and you pass to convex combinations, and this is a linear functional, uh, uh, this is this passes to the limit to the same limit. And here, by doing convex combinations by the convexity of this functional here, uh, you only make it bigger. Okay, and if you, if you see when you make this thing here bigger, 
uh, this is uh, even easier to prove. So there is no problem uh, in passing to the convex combinations. And here you see why it is so extremely useful uh, whenever uh, you have these convex optimization problems. You can pass to convex combinations without any extra cost. Okay, now the pi tilde x, the pi tilde x, they of course lead to the pi tilde uh, <coughs> equal to integral of pi tilde x d mu x. And this must be equal to the original pi because this is still the same limit. So we even know how the pi uh, <coughs> has to look. Namely, we have identified these limits here and we know that uh, this thing here converges. Now, what do we have? We have that the, for almost each x, this thing here converges. Now the gamma x, the, or the density of gamma x, is uh, a positive function. Uh, now how do I uh, do mu x uh, when you... Yeah, this is a little exercise that when you have that this thing here converges to gamma x, then as these things are positive, we can always apply Fatou's lemma and such that the corresponding integrals only become can become smaller in the limit, which gives you this inequality here. Okay, so you have the details in the, in the lecture notes. Again, Bertram, thank you for sending it out. And we have done the one. Okay, so we have the lower semi-continuity. The next thing we have to show is this inf compactness, where this time we can completely forget about the psi. So we only concentrate on this thing here. And uh, I still don't have the good technique. So the proof of one, I did exactly as it is in the lecture notes. For the proof of two, I do it slightly differently, uh, <coughs> namely doing the same trick once more. So, uh, okay, what we need is the, let pi n be in, uh, call this here, LC, the level set <coughs> of C. Okay, so the pi n and we need a, a, a limit, okay? So what do we have? We have pi n is any sequence in MT, <coughs> in MT, uh, so this is in MT uh, from mu to dot. And this is <clears throat> uh, this is in the probabilities on R D cross R D. Okay, so what we have is this thing here has no relevance because the psi is zero. What we have that these distances here that they are bounded. Okay, now this is the same. Uh, this implies that the variances of the pi n are bounded by, I think, c plus 1 or something, or c plus d. <coughs> Why? What is the variance of pi uh, x? 
can one, yeah, one can read it with the time better. The variance of pi x, this you can also write as the w2 square distance from pi x to delta x. This is just a fancy way of writing the variance. It's transporting the pi x to the point x, which is the midpoint, okay, and summing up all the squares. This is just the variance, okay, and now from the triangle inequality for uh, wpx, delta x, and gamma x, this distance here is, we usually wrote one and then we uh, realized it depends on the dimension. So this is the dimension d, is the distance that the Wasserstein distance squared of delta x to uh, gamma x. Is this uh, the, by the way, is it d or d squared? Uh, I'm not sure now one, no, 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 it's d. Uh, Bertram, please check whether it's d or d squared. Uh, Okay, so anyhow, the variances are bounded. So the variance are bounded and the center is fixed x. So in particular, it is tight here. This is tight in this set here. And so there exists a pi n, which goes, yeah, a, a subsequence, which I still denote by pi n, which goes to pi in the weak topology. So this is in PRD cross RD. Okay, now <clears throat> what you have to do is to show, have to show that the pi is in uh, this level set C. Okay, and now I do it slightly differently than in the lecture notes here. We do again the same trick. The same trick is without loss of generality, the pi n is of the form integral uh, pi n x d mu x and <coughs> pi n, yeah, let's give this here a name, this is pi hat and uh, pi n x converges to some pi hat x uh, for mu almost each x. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this we have by exactly the same trick because we can, it does not cost to uh, pass to convex combinations to find this uh, limit pi tilde here. Okay, so we have the pi tilde is of course given by this pi tilde x. Now, what we have to show, we have to show uh, <coughs> that uh, the pi x, this uh, pi hat, that it is in LC, which means that this thing here should be verified, which means that the, uh, that the uh, distance in the limit here is bounded by C again. But again, we just have to copy the same argument which we have used before, but the delicate thing is to show that, or slightly delicate, that the pi hat is really in mp <coughs> mu dot, and in other words, that the barycenter of pi bar x is equal to x for mu almost each x. That's what I have to show, yeah. Now here, once more, the trick with the, uh, with the convex combinations. Now, uh, everybody remembers now the Lagrangian here. So, what do I have? Uh, call variance n of x is equal to this. I try to dry it well. Well, 
Okay, the variance in x is the variance of pi in x. Okay, now we know <laughs> that the variance of pi n uh, is equal to the integral of the variances of the pi n x, d mu x, and this is less than or equal to c for every n. Well, this formula that the uh, variance of pi n is equal to the variance of all these uh, pi n x's, uh, is it uh, true? This is, well, sorry, this is not quite true. Uh, that because the variance of pi n, I just uh, notice minus the variance of mu, okay, that this thing here is the same as the pi n x, <coughs> the variance of the pi n x, and uh, why is this the case? Because the variance of pi n x uh, is the same as the expectation under uh, pi n. Or oh, let's do this is a little exercise. As I told you, uh, the exercises you can challenge me uh, next week. We uh, uh, still have class on next week uh, to do it, but instead of doing this thing here is that the variance of pi n uh, is simply dominated by these uh, variances of uh, pi n x. Uh, so this is here minus variance of mu, something like this I have to write. Okay, but the point is that these, these things here are functions on uh, Rd with respect to mu, which are bounded in expectation. These are positive functions. And now again, we do our trick here is that uh, the, uh, <coughs> by passing once more to convex combinations, we can have that the variance of pi uh, variance n of x converges to some function, uh, uh, call it f of x, because I don't claim here that it's the variance of pi, uh, the variance x, f x in L1 mu. Okay, so in particular, this thing here is bounded for mu almost each x. These variances, the, the variances of pi and x along this convex combination, which we are free to choose here, this remains bounded. And now one more exercise. Exercise if pi and x uh, converges weakly to pi x and the variance remains bounded sup over the n is finite okay then uh, <coughs> it is that the barycenter of pi x is the same as the barycenters of the pi n x and they are all x. So when you have that the variance is bounded, then in the limit, in the weak limit, the barycenter cannot change. In general, of course, it could change. Uh, in general, you can lose from weak convergence, you can even lose uh, first moments, okay? But if you have a bound on the variance, then it cannot change. So this is ex exercise one, this is exercise two, Okay, and summing up, we have found a, 
uh, uh, we have found a limit pi <coughs> in uh, a limit of our sequence pi n in LC, which is really in this set uh, LC. Okay, so these things we have done, and with this I have proved that there is no duality gap. All the details with epsilon and delta in the pages 5 to 7 of these lecture notes. Okay, now after this we get some structure on our duality theory here. Okay, so uh, now we come to the, yeah, to what we call the crucial lemma. <coughs> we want some structure. Structure for psi. As I told you, our aim is to find a limiting object, a dual optimizer, psi hat. <coughs> how, to, how to find psi hat? Our uh, dual optimizer for which we hope for. We, uh, we will see sometimes we find it, sometimes not, and this will give us some uh, some information, and for this I uh, give the following definition, <coughs> definition, okay, it's a function psi from Rd to R is called uh, d square 2 convex <coughs> if psi uh, plus square over 2, <coughs> which means the function psi, I should here write a dot, uh, and if I add the parabola is, and this function I shall always call g, is convex. Okay, so this is, uh, if you look in Villani, there is, uh, not only in Villani, there is uh, a, a big theory where instead of d square over 2, you take any function c here, uh, and you have a notion, well, nice function c, uh, should be convex functions, and then you have a notion of C convexity, but we say D square over 2, and this is this name uh, you find somewhere in a book by Villani, if you have here the parabola. Now, important is the following, important is the picture. If the psi is like this, then the uh, the psi tilde, <coughs> ah, yeah, I did not tell you what it means. Uh, this is the, uh, the definition of d square over 2 convexity, and what we need is that the psi tilde is the d square over 2 convex hull, which is uh, the biggest mm, uh, no, the biggest or the smallest, yeah, uh, the biggest. 
uh, d square over 2 convex function with psi tilde less than or equal to psi. And now here comes the picture. <coughs> yeah, f first a remark. We have psi tilde is the same as that you first uh, add this thing here. <coughs> okay, then this function here, well, if it's d square over 2, uh, uh, if psi is d square over 2 convex, then this function is uh, convex. But if we try uh, <coughs> to find the, this is the d square over 2 convex hull. <coughs> so we take this thing here, now we take the convex hull of this, okay, and then to this whole thing we subtract again the square over 2. Okay, funny thing, but very elementary, and the picture is like this. Okay, what, ah, I wanted a different color. So, this is the psi, upsala. Here you, again, you make the parabola, and here again you make a parabola. So this is the psi tilde. Can one see it? Yes, one can see it. So, <coughs> which means, in how to illustrate this thing here, if we take psi plus square root over 2, then if this here is the zero line, then this thing here is transported to <coughs> uh, such this parabola here, and now this function becomes this thing here, somehow like this, uh, something, uh, okay, <coughs> so you see if I add to this psi the parabola and then I do with this thing here, I do the uh, convex hull, which are these straight lines, okay, so uh, yeah, and then here, here it goes, uh, goes on somehow. Okay, I don't elaborate how it does here. So you see, this is the convex hull of this function psi. <coughs> convex hull of psi plus square over 2. Okay, and if you have this convex hull and you transform it again in this framework, then these lines here become parabolas. Okay, so this is elementary geometry, and but it will be uh, of uh, major importance to have this uh, this notion, which of course could all be rephrased by only talking about convex functions. By the way, some more notation in the present. Uh, in the present lecture notes, yeah, maybe you have noticed in the, when I wrote the Lagrangian, I put a minus in front of the uh, Lagrange multiplier term. And in the original four authors paper, they had a plus and we decided it's more natural to put a minus because it's penalizing and that you always find convex functions. Of course, you could also define the d square over 2 concave functions, etc., by changing the sign, but uh, it seems to us that the uh, notion of a convex function is more natural than that of a concave function. But that's, that's purely taste. Okay, now comes the crucial lemma. Okay, where is it? The crucial lemma, uh, which is the... Ah, now first I need a, a sublemma. Lemma 
3, 3. OK, so let Psi be in C, <coughs> make it bounded. It works for bounded, but it also works for C lin RD. <coughs> for, OK, then we have Psi tilde of Y is equal uh, to the inf of the pi of the p, sorry, in p x two of R D, and here I have <coughs> psi uh, plus uh, over two d p minus y squared over 2. <clears throat> OK, now there are also other ways to write it. I have assembled some more. Uh, where do I have this? Uh, this is, do I have it? No, I don't have it, so I have to do it myself is the inf over the same p. Yeah, I should say what this is. These are all the probability measures with, uh, uh, with a barycenter x. And again, I make, the, uh, I make the drawing from before. So this was the psi. OK, and this was the This was the psi tilde, okay, and now you have some point, some point x, okay. Now what you do is <coughs> that uh, you try to, uh, uh, this is our point y, and this is, I write this here, is our p. Okay, by p I mean I put here mass on uh, the points uh, called this y1 and y2 in such a way that the y is uh, in, the, in the middle of these uh, two things and I take here uh, the, <coughs> uh, the points where this touches and what you have is when you take the function psi plus uh, the uh, square over 2, then this, as it was before, this becomes a straight line. Okay, so you evaluate it here and then you subtract again. Uh, is the minus and the plus, I have to make it convex, yes. And then you have to subtract the minus square over 2. Another way to write it is like this, the inf over p in px 2 rd. And here we have, uh, yeah, I should have done an integral here, yeah. An integral of psi of uh, eta, uh, and now I have here plus eta minus y squared over 2, <coughs> dram, dram, d, p. <coughs> well, this is, this is the same thing. Uh, again, this is exercise number 3 that you verify that all these things are the same. So again, inf over the p, I can also write it like this. Uh, uh, so, okay, I don't need this here. So yeah, the same inf over the same p's here uh, of the integral of uh, c uh, eta. <coughs> Uh, psi tilde, c eta uh, dp, p, 
plus the variance of p. Integrating this out is simply the variance. And this is maybe important. This is even a min. Here, this thing here is a min. Why is this a min? Uh, if this is true, if P is in CB, uh, CBRD, or even if it is in this uh, <coughs> space, why? Well, if you try to do this thing here on the picture, okay, then you see the only way of finding these touching points, this is that the whole thing, and if this is bounded here, the psi, okay, that the whole thing happens within a compact set. I think everybody sees this, uh, that you cannot, when you try to, to get the, the best P, uh, uh, you, it doesn't make sense to go out of a, of a bounded set here. And therefore you can pass to a limit of this piece. And uh, yeah, and this gives you the minimum. Okay, the best way to see it, I, I erased the picture, is to add to this thing the parabola. And then you see when you take the convex hull and this thing goes in a bounded way around the parabola, then taking convex hulls always only involves uh, a bounded set here. Okay, so this is exercise number three to do these things here. And it's not only for bounded, if you, this is exercise 3a, when you have here linear growth and the quadratic growth is bigger than the linear growth, it is still true here. Okay, so I have, this is the lemma, which I leave as an exercise. Question? Yes. Um, do, we, do we actually always mean um, P to Y of RD? Or why, where does the X come, X come from here? Uh, this this here. here uh, by, uh, by, by the X comes that the barycenter of the P is equal to X. Yeah. yeah but, but what, what X? Or ah, ah, sorry, sorry. It's not the X. It's the Y. It's the Y. Sorry, okay, sorry, y sorry, y. sorry. This is the Y. Yeah. Okay, Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, here, here the Y is good, and here it's okay. okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I have here the definition, and I come to the to the main uh, uh, result, and this this is the most interesting thing now, which I uh, have. I can present you so far, and this is really novel. Uh. So, good. Uh, where is the crucial lemma? Uh, the crucial lemma is here. Yes, uh, this is page two, page three. Here I am. On page three is... <coughs> okay, so we have uh, D of psi. Okay, you remember this was the inf over all the p in mt mu dot of l p psi. Okay, this is the dual function and uh, that the dual function d psi is less than or equal of d psi tilde. So this is lemma 
three, four. Okay, <clears throat> and therefore, as a consequence, uh, for the dual problem, D of dot, <clears throat> we may restrict to D square over two convex functions. Okay, now why is this the case? Remember, the, we take the dual function and we try to maximize the dual function. The primal is minimized, the dual is maximized, okay? And if we have this, the lemma is this assertion here that for every psi, we pass to its d square uh, over two convex envelope, okay? And by this, we can only make the dual function uh, uh, bigger. And therefore, when we try to find optimizing sequences, and this is of course the name of the game, to find optimizing sequences psi n, we can, without loss of generality, we can uh, restrict ourselves to these uh, functions called them psi tilde, okay? And now, this, uh, that's a funny name, this d square over 2 uh, convex, but essentially it's the same thing as convex uh, functions. I mean, it's just always adding or uh, subtracting these parabolas, which are of course completely harmless. So, you should think of convex functions here. Okay, and remember, our goal is to pass to a limit. And if you have convex functions, it's much, much easier to pass to a limit because, yeah, for example, if a, if a sequence of convex functions remains bounded on a convex set, you can always pass to a limit, okay, by extracting a subsequence, etc., etc. So this will be extremely helpful and, yeah, Having said this, let's go to the proof. Okay, so the following strategy is the following. <coughs> For every P uh, in MT mu dot, there exists a pi, which I call pi, uh, uh, bar uh, in MT mu dot such that and we have the following L P bar psi is less than or equal <coughs> to uh, L uh, pi of C tilde. In the lecture notes, there is still an epsilon, but with this little remark that you, that the inf in the previous lemma is a min, uh, we don't even have to bother with the, uh, with the epsilon, which is purely technical. Okay, so what does this mean? We have, we want to uh, make the, uh, <coughs> the optimum of, uh, so I call D of psi bar, psi tilde, <coughs> this is equal, yeah, we can write this uh, because the D of psi tilde is the inf over all the pi's, okay? So, which means that uh, we have, yeah, we have this inequality and this means that for the psi, we always have a pi bar uh, which is dominated by the d of uh, psi tilde and therefore this thing here, this is, uh, how, do, how do I do? Yeah, yeah, I can make the uh, inf over all the pi bars, yeah, <coughs> uh, this thing here is 
less than or equal than the di deep psi tilde, and this is equal to the d of psi. So I repeat the reasoning. I repeat the reasoning for we are given the p. Okay, I changed the color. We are given the p, and we we have the psi and the psi tilde. And now what we say is when this here is something which will approximate the d of uh, uh, <coughs> psi tilde for uh, a good p, then we can find some p square, uh, p, uh, p bar, such that this is less than or equal. And this is certainly uh, for, this, for, the, for the pi bar, for the fixed pi bar, which we find here, is greater or equal than when we take the inf over all the pi bars, and this is the d of psi. Okay, so once we have this, uh, then we, uh, we are finished, okay? Because this, yeah, this is exactly our assertion. Okay, so we have to show this thing here. This is our claim, and for this I need some space. Okay, uh, yeah, I erase this here. Okay, let this dry here properly. So, What is our construction? What is our construction? Uh, the following is, so the pi is of the form integral of pi x d mu x. Okay, so and what are we going to do? Uh, okay, to relate the psi with the psi tilde, <coughs> the uh, now I have again my, my little uh, drawing here, okay, and this is the, this d square uh, convex hull. Okay, now the, the pi x has some mass here, some mass here, some mass here, some mass here, so these are these are the points pi x. We imagine that these are uh, <coughs> uh, these are uh, on these four points the pi x is sitting. So when the <coughs> and the barycenter here here is the x, which is the barycenter of the pi x. So once again, what I try to do with these four dots here, this is how I visualize the distribution of the pi x, which is a measure with barycenter x. Okay, now for these points, I now uh, define the uh, pi bar x, uh, no, maybe green is, no. It, I think it changes color after some time. Pi. Let's try green. Pi bar x. Can we read this? Well, not so wonderful. Okay, but the pi bar x is that whenever the, the blue line and the yellow line is the same, we leave it as it is. Okay. Now, if the pi x has a mass where the blue line is different from the, can you see my dots? Yeah, you can see my green dots. Okay, uh, if you have here uh, uh, some mass of pi p x, which is where these two things are different, then what I do is I distribute this mass, I put it here, just as we did it in the previous lemma, such that this mass is split into these two masses here, 
such that the barycenter does not change and such that here the blue and the yellow line is uh, <coughs> are equal. Now the next one is this one again nothing changes and this one here again we distribute the mass to these two things here. This is how it looks in R1. The same thing is equal in, uh, uh, in R, <coughs> R, RD. Okay, and as I told you before, we can, this is not, not only optimal up to an epsilon, we can find an optimal uh, uh, way of distributing this yellow mass to these two green points. Okay, so the, the pi bar x, the pi bar x is uh, equal, <coughs> uh, obtained from pi x by spreading the masses where psi tilde is different from psi. Okay, so this is a little bit cumbersome to write it up, but I want to give you the idea and uh, uh, the, the details are written up here. Okay, now having this preparation, what we do is we compare these two things. So you have this, this is formula number three, two. This is very nicely written up. So L pi bar psi, okay, is equal to one half W two squared of pi bar X to gamma X we have, okay, minus the, uh, yeah, this is the integral D mu X minus, and here we have integral over the psi y, and here we have d nu y minus d p y of y. Okay, this was just, here I have, yeah, I have p bar, that's important here, the p bar, and <coughs> this we have to compare to the, uh, uh, here I have L, uh, this is a pi of psi tilde, and I write this explicitly, W2 squared pi x, now gamma x, d mu x, uh, minus here I have C tilde y, d nu y minus d p y. Okay, like this. Ah, yeah, to them, I wrote here what I. This thing is the definition, this is the definition. Okay, and what we have to show that this is less than or equal. This is what we have to show. This is exactly what is written here. Okay, now let's, uh, let's do this. Okay. Okay, let's compare these two things and let's compare these two things. We want this. Okay, now <coughs> the pi bar x, uh, this is obtained by spreading out these masses by keeping the barycenter. By the way, I should have mentioned before that when you do this for each of these points in the mass of pi x, you don't change 
the barycenter from pi x to pi bar x because you always maintain the barycenters. Okay, but this thing here can really become bigger. So this is not uh, typically not smaller than this, but bigger. But we can estimate this less than or equal than the variance of pi bar <coughs> minus the variance by, uh, uh, of pi. Why? Because when you have, think of a, uh, of a, uh, where am I? Yeah. Think of an optimal transport from gamma x to pi x, to p x, not to, no, it's pi, pi x. Okay. So you have this, here somewhere you have this Gaussian and this uh, goes to these yellow points. Okay. So instead of mapping here this and causing a transport cost of this distance here, now you can make a transport from gamma to the pi bar by first doing this and then splitting it and going here and here. Okay? So you can, this is some uh, transport from gamma x to pi bar x, which is obtained from this optimal transport, uh, and in such a way that what you add is exactly this variance. Uh, this, this is a little calculation, but it should be clear that what you add in the average here is exactly the variance of uh, this uh, measure which spreads out here the mass and summing up over all the axes where this happens and then uh, <coughs> oh, of all these points and then over all the axes you obtain this thing here. Okay, now this thing here, what happens? Uh, here we have by well, we can forget about this. Uh, and what we have here is a minus. So here is a minus and a minus. So we have to integrate the pi bar with respect to psi as uh, compared the pi with respect to psi tilde. Okay, now first of all, uh, the pi bar, the pi bar was obtained by spreading out uh, the masses here and this thing here is equal to the psi tilde. Why? Okay. <clears throat> because we have psi of y is equal to psi tilde of y on the support of pi bar x. Uh, psi tilde. Uh, yeah, pi bar x, and then we add over all the x's, yeah. Uh, <coughs> okay, <laughs> so you have to write this as an integral over the, uh, the mu axis. Okay, so if you have the pi bar x, you remember this shuffled out the mass here to the points where the blue and the yellow uh, uh, curve were equal. So we only have to prove this thing here, okay? Now, what happens when we do this movement? What happens to the blue curve? Well, this shuffling is done exactly against the parabola. And what we have, this is in fact equal to the variance of pi bar minus the variance of pi. And now with the right uh, uh, a sign. It's the minus in front of this because the variance we make it smaller by uh, shuffling it out and what you have here is a, uh, an inequality. Here we have an equality and therefore the uh, inequality is proved. Okay, so I think it's a nice thing when you uh, look at these two terms. Here 
you lose something, here you win something, uh, but altogether you can estimate to find this uh, inequality here. Okay, so how late? Yeah, there is still uh, 10 minutes. Now I will start with an example. Okay, how does this whole thing look like? In concrete examples, uh, here I am. So, example, uh, let mu equal delta at the point one and mu is the law of, uh, of E to the gamma minus one half. <clears throat> okay, uh, then uh, uh, so this is our beloved geometric uh, distribution. Gamma is a random variable like n01. So this is a geometric, uh, ge uh, geometric. Uh, how does one call it? The geometric normal distribution. Uh, normal distribution. <coughs> yeah, you can write formulas, etc. So here is uh, what do we do? Yeah, I put here the mu, uh, which is just uh, mass on one, the geometric. Uh, this is the law of the geometric brown motion at time one. And of course, in this case, it's very easy or it's almost trivial. When you just have one point, then there exists exactly one uh, pi in mt uh, mu nu, <coughs> which is, yeah, where all the pi x are equal to this new, uh, there is, uh, that's, that's trivial. Okay, so I don't have to choose because the mu is just a point measure. Okay, but still, uh, how does L p psi look? And what is the optimal psi? I mean, we can still do our duality theory, also it's hyper simple. We will then make it more complicated as time uh, goes by. And you remember, the most important thing uh, to have in mind is the uh, is Daniel, it's very boring. <laughs> no, it's okay. Sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, this is our Kallenberg, and what we usually had, we had this way on the slopes of the Kallenberg, and we tried to find a relative optimum. In our case, there is only one. Can you, can you distinguish the color? Yeah, it's a little bit different. <coughs> there is only one point, which is our pi here. So there is not, this is just a one point set. Uh, mt mu is just 
this pie, okay? And <clears throat> the, so to optimize it is trivial, but still, when you stand on the slopes of the Kainberg, you can still ask, well, where is the steepest slope, okay? When I move out, because the idea of our duality theory is that you try to uh, enlarge our set. This is our mt mu nu, <coughs> and which is in our case just a point, while the whole area around the Kainberg is our mt mu dot. And you still want to find the uh, the Lagrangian, which in this case is just the gradient taken from this point uh, <coughs> of, the, of the function, and you want to compute it. Okay, now the claim is the following. Uh, yeah, uh, well, before I do this, I make, the, I make some uh, 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 yeah, first I do the, I still have six minutes. Okay, the optimal transport from gamma, and I take now gamma zero, contrary to what I told you before, because I prepared it like this, to the, uh, to new. Okay, <coughs> what is it? This is, uh, uh, y is equal to, uh, what I have to do is e to the y minus one half. Yeah, this is just this formula here, uh, because this transports, uh, a way of writing this is that the transport y is transformed into e y minus one half. So here is the gamma and here is the uh, <coughs> transport and this is of course the optimal transport because it's a monotone map, okay? Now this is the y, okay? The inverse, the inverse, what is it? I did some calculations because this is of course very different, is uh, z is equal <coughs> I have written it up because I'm very bad in these things. Uh, okay, I have, no, of course I put away my thing. So, <coughs> uh, this is the ln of uh, y, uh, what is it, plus one half, I believe, yeah. Uh, okay, so in this direction, so in this direction, it's, it's, it's the exponential. In this direction, it's, uh, yeah, we give these things a name. This is in the sequel, uh, if it goes here, the elements are y, here the elements are z. And this way, it, uh, it is the, the exponential. And this we call uh, g. Uh, Okay, no. Ah, yes. Uh, thank you. I, I know that I'm, I'm very bad in this particular in front of a, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, why is e to the, yeah, like this it is, yeah. Because here, here are the sets and here it goes in this direction and this, uh, this map we call uh, in from here to here, it's the v of y. Uh, no, no, it, this goes in this direction. Uh, this we call the the g of y. We try we try to organize well the the letters here, and this is the v of z. Okay, now uh, yeah, these are the transports. Yeah. Are you sure? I think it should be g of z, right? Because that's g ah. of z. Yeah, thank you. So, from the, yeah, then of course, uh, I, I do it wrong. This is the V of Z because the exponential goes in this direction, yes. And this is the G of Y. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, the point is the point is uh, that we have uh, the g of y. We have the uh, uh, the function g of y is equal to uh, the uh, to, uh, and here is one half by the way, not one one half. Okay. Now the g of y is uh, the primitive function of this thing here for reasons you will see in a moment. So this is y ln y. And now this becomes a minus one half. Uh, okay, so, so that g prime is equal to g. Uh, so I think this is correct. And now the claim is that the psi hat, which is equal to this g of y and we make minus y square over 2 is the dual optimizer. So what am I doing here? I just, well this falls of course from the sky is a surprise. Uh, I just want to show you in the very easiest situations that you have explicit formulas and that you get some feeling for this psi hat. Why? Something which comes from the optimal transports here gives you the dual optimizer. Now, uh, the dual optimizer, this g, uh, the little g, the uh, y, l and y is of course a convex function. So this thing here, when I subtract this, is a d square over 2 convex function. So this is nice. But of course, I mean, is the dual optimizer, this is of course a little bit sloppy, because uh, uh, this thing here is not bounded, this function, and it's not, uh, yeah, neither this nor this has only linear growth. So you go out of the way. But you see it has a natural structure. It has the structure of a d square over 2 convex function. And when we plug it formally in into our Lagrangian, then uh, we shall see uh, that uh, this, is, uh, this makes sense and it really plays the role of a dual optimizer. And it paves the way how, sh how we should adapt the definitions and enlarge the uh, domain of uh, definition for the dual variables. Okay, I still have, no, I don't have, uh, I don't have, I don't have, uh, okay, yeah, we see each other. I will start with this example again, then, yeah, then it will be a nice thing. You can think about what happens if you have now here at 1, we have the same picture and you do the same thing on the negative axis. Okay, here is minus 1 and the mu is 1 half of delta 1 plus delta minus 1. Okay, so if you have this thing mirrored on the negative side, what in this case, how do you, how do you find here uh, corresponding formulas, what is a good candidate for a dual optimizer psi, etc. And this will lead us the way to a general understanding of the situation. See you next week at 10.30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.